Yeah, and uh, I will mention that Magnus was on the beach until quite late today, so now I understand why <laughs> 1A6. Uh, this game, however, between Sadwani and Stankovic uh, is more mainline. It's the Dragon Sicilian. Uh, if we just quickly go from move one, we see the Sicilian defense by black, uh, the open variation, and just this last move, G6, shows a lot of ambition. The Dragon variation its kind of fallen out of fashion at the mm -hmm. top levels, but it still seems to be holding up theoretically, and Sadwani is the first to pause. I'm expecting white to just play the move pawn to f3. We all know these uh, ideas, queen to d2 and white castles queenside, and it's kind of mutual attacks. Um, are you surprised here, the lower rated player pl playing such a risky variation? Um, not really. I've always thought that uh, players from you know this part of Europe have a, a very aggressive style, a very attacking style, so from that point of view. I'm not too surprised. I'm happy to see it. I hope yeah. uh, we'll see a, a sharp game here on Batu. Maybe Stankovic also saw Raunek was on the back foot on day one. Um, so yeah, he's playing a very direct approach. And let's see what the rest of the team are, are against Stankovic. Yeah, Sadwani against Stankovic. And okay, there's a big threat on the board. White's Okay, black defends against this. White's last move is designed to capture on f7. Took me a while to see that uh, <laughs> black doesn't have time to play a move like pawn to e5 because white just takes this uh, on f7 safely, defended by the bishop, and will likely win. So this threat defended against by knight to e6. So just asking, maybe forcing white to take this knight. And that has just been played. Bishop takes knight, pawn recaptures. Black's pawn structure looks a bit odd. But yeah, I'm also a little bit worried about uh, just the king situation because mm -hmm. that pawn on g6 is uh, really lacking a defender right now. Can I just immediately play uh, g4 here? Ooh, uh, I would like to open, or am I missing? Yeah, I guess black has a threat. If <laughs> there is a, this little threat. So oh, maybe not, Fiona, you're right. Your instincts <laughs> by, are spot by on. Pure <laughs> <laughs> by pure fluke. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is genius. <laughs> Instincts are the most important thing in attacking uh, chess. And g4, yeah, I guess, hmm. I was going to say Maybe. the other way around. e5, just to mention to viewers, this walks into a pin, so black cannot take the bishop on d4 uh, as the black queen would drop. Suddenly white is winning uh, because this pawn is falling on g6. Okay, why not g4 in that case? Uh, white has just committed to uh, a slightly less ambitious move, but a very logical one. G4 looks very tempting. I wonder whether it's something to do with trading Take bishops and first. then going e5, but e5 can G5 still be met again. by this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I liked it, Fiona. <laughs> he could have gone for this. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> he could and should maybe have gone for this, but queen to g3 by Ranak Sedwani, uh, also very logical, hitting mm. this pawn on g6. And black will most likely have to lose a bit of time, take a timeout to play a uh, defensive uh, move, such as king to h7. And yeah, it just depends in a position like this whether white's knight can ever get active. If it can somehow come over to the king side, then white has a huge attack. But if black can trade queens off or somehow open the center um, in a favorable way, then black should be doing okay. I don't think the king is too troubled right now. Uh, and he plays e5. The moves are really flying yeah, in on this I'm, board. I'm surprised. I mean, e5, yeah. what happens? What am I missing now? Uh, yeah, e5 was played attacking the bishop, okay, the bishop drops the bishop. back, and now king h7 looks forced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know about you, I think I would take white. I would 100% take white. <laughs> uh, so if king h7, mm -hmm. at least now the knight's path is not so clear any longer. f4 is now under black's control, mm -hmm. but in return there is a hole on, on d5. Yeah, there's a hole on d5. If you jump immediately, maybe mm -hmm. black can evict you, uh, but I mean, there might be moves such as bishop g5 preparing mm. the knight jump into d5. Uh, there's definitely lots of appealing options. Bishop pairs, we talked about it quite a lot today uh, and uh, the last couple of rounds, but this bishop on g7, at least for now, is a bit blocked in and dead. And wow, Fiona, let's... We have a result on board three. Conventional chess wisdom in general, uh, fighting a flank attack with a counter strike in the middle, but unfortunately missing a key move. And Fiona, Spot the tactic. <laughs> Before it's too late. 
<laughs> oh, God. <laughs> before, maybe. Born to before, that's right. And uh, unfortunately, before Black is able to uh, coordinate his pieces, uh, Stankovic here uh, realized that this attack on the queen means that the bishop is lost. No way to continue protecting this piece. Look at the white queen's vision all the way across the board defending this pawn. Really unorthodox winning move there, just opening up the white king. Easy to miss. And after Black tried counterattacking against the white queen, unfortunately, a simple capture uh, was the end of the game. The bishop will drop next if white's queen is captured. The bishop threw itself off the board, but we saw resignation, resignation even in this position with white's extra knight. It looks like it's going to be a good day for the Indians on team uh, Offerspiel. Uh, do you want to start with Magnus or start with Pranav? Let's start with the spectacular. <laughs> uh, 